What's taking them so long? They've legged it. I can't sit still. I'm gonna walk around. I hope Mrs. Brown doesn't mind me smoking in here. But goddamn, do I need one. Old Nintendo Gamer. And son. Hello, and welcome back to the rainy, windy climbs of Pineview in Rain Swept Part 5 with me, Old Nintendo Gamer. As we continue on our journey to discover the truth of Diane and Chris's murder, we're off to see Jack. I don't see him anywhere. Oh, let's look around. Is this thing ever getting fixed? <laughs> My controller's playing up. Ah, let's have a look at the car. <clears throat> well, he's not here. What do we do? Send an officer over to his house. His car is still here, so he must be in Pineview. Until then, we got other leads we need to follow. Let's go talk to Alan. He was employed by the church to shut down the hotel because he wants to keep the Pineview nice and quiet. Hello, Alan. How long are you going to go away for? Oh, hey, Detective. A couple of days, I think. Who's this guy? Oh, it's Mark. Yeah, a couple of days, I think. What's in Fairwoods, Alan? F Fairwoods? Why? Why would you say that? I'm, I'm not. Wait, you going? Wait, you going back to Fairwoods? I, n n no, I, I don't know why. I, and who's Audrey? How did you, Alan? I. I, I didn't know how to tell you, Mark. Detective, a Audrey is my wife. W what was, I guess. Five years ago, we had no choice but to end our marriage. It wasn't bitter. We just wanted different things from each other. But about a month ago or so back, she called me. I learned that Audrey had breast cancer, which is what um, the Fairview's clinic is on about. It was a carcinoma of her breast. What? I didn't know how to tell you all this, Mark. After five years of absolutely no contact, something broke. I realized I just had to see her again. On the sixth, the day of the incident, we learned that she'd been cured. The cancer is gone. That's where I was on the sixth detective with her in the hospital. She's been treated at. What didn't you just say? Why keep it a secret and risk becoming a suspect? Audrey and I talked and realized we wanted to get back together. She said she wanted that from her first day apart, but only if I wanted it too. But I, I didn't want Mark to know. I didn't know how to tell him that I was going back after everything. After my, well, she can come here. After my marriage ended, it was a very difficult time for both Mark and I and as a family. In a bad way, but I didn't suffer alone. Mark suffered with me, for me, emotionally and even financially. He spent a month at Fairwoods with me, holding my life together. He kept me from falling apart. He made sacrifices for my sake. After I joined him in Pineview, he let me stay in his place for a month. I couldn't find any work, so he split his cafe and let me run a business without taking any money for the place. I didn't know how to tell you that I was going to disregard everything you've done for me, Mark. That I was going to go back and turn your suffering meaningless. That's all. You went through was for nothing. Alan, you idiot. All you had to do was talk to me about it openly and honestly. You know that isn't easy. Well, you would know that I wouldn't be hurt at all. All those years back, I've suffered for you because I love you. Because I want you to be happy. If going back makes you happier, then that's all that matters to me now. Not that we wasted a lot of money and energy some years back. Mark... You don't know how happy I am for you right now. Plus, we'd uh, had fun here, right? Thank you, Mark, for everything. I'll make up, up to you, somehow, I swear. Am I free to leave, Detective? You should call up the hospital to confirm my story. Yeah, right. We'll be coming back to Pineview soon. I should be back in a day or two. Uh, I'll be here for some time before moving to Fairwoods.
I hope things work out for him. I don't think he'd ever really gotten over her. Uh, it's going to be a little lonely without him here, working right next to the cafe. I'll visit more often, Mark. I mean, I already come every morning, but still. Thanks, Officer Blunt. Anyway, how's the investigation going, Detective? Oh, that was Officer Blunt saying. You know, we can't talk about the case, Mark. <laughs> oh, yes, of course, of course. But it's odd, you know, I don't get it. People say they're extremely toxic on the verge of killing each other, and anyway, but I never saw that. I only hear it from others, and I, as I expect they did as well. Yes, it's always from others. Those two look fine, except the last few months where they stopped coming in out of their house. I mean, couples argue, right? There's nothing wrong with that, as long as they try to work on it. And I think they did do that. In fact, I remember once in the cafe... Ooh, a little flashback to the cafe. Let me sip some coffee while I'm listening to the cafe. I mean, when you're angry, it feels like you've completely forgotten everything that we have. It almost feels like you don't know me, that I love you. Oh. Hmm, coffee. I got different coffee today. It's a bit um, flowery and a bit sour compared to my usual. It's not bad. As if I'm a stranger and that you've never felt anything for me. Chris, it isn't like that. Remember that time when when you called me over to your place and it was raining and we ordered pizza? And we made coffee in the kitchen? Remember how that perfect that was? And of course, then we kissed for the first time. Moments like those are always alive in the back of my head, even when we're arguing. That's why I don't want to destroy you in a fight. I feel too much for you to ever do that. I'm to destroy you in a fight! But those moments, it's like you've never existed or mattered to you. They did. And I don't want to destroy you either. Chris, you do. You destroy me. I don't know. Sometimes it feels like you do. Chris, it's just that when I'm angry, I forget all about that. I, only for that moment. You hold yourself back because of the good times, but I can't. I guess I do forget everything for a bit. But I do love you too, Chris. What should we do? Well, Mark, Mark the cafetier is uh, listening in. The barista, sorry. I don't know, just remember all of this when it sounds like I'm losing my mind. But I don't mean any of those terrible things I say and just try to ignore it, maybe. Hmm. Oh, wait, what's this in my pocket? I'm pleased to see you, there's something in my pocket. Huh? Did you really walk around with post-its in your pocket and why are you holding it up in the air like some dog? Sometimes. We can pin up major points and that we can refer to during arguments and hopefully it doesn't work like that. This isn't science. They're just emotions. And how else do we make it work? I don't know. Not like this. Alright, let's just write stuff down for fun. Don't need to pin it up. Come on. Fine. Let's make your dumb notes. Why well, have I got half a clock on the table? Well, show me. Oh, I gotta hold the button and drag it. Where's my coffee in the way? Oh my god. And now I won't go off the edge of the table. Okay. During arguments, it's like you don't remember who I am. Try to think back all the good times we had together. Don't forget about all that just because you're annoyed. I can't do that when I'm angry, Chris. I already told you. You have to scrap this one. I just can't think about any of the good stuff when I'm annoyed. All right. Come on. What does this mean? What do you think it means? It's what we're doing now, discussing our issues and not ignoring them. Let's keep doing that. Convey patiently. You know, me, I get messed up when you talk to me like you don't even know me. Let's discuss our issues patiently. I know it's hard to keep calm at times, but let's not say horrible things to each other. Mm, yeah, all right. I doubt it. Who? What? This is for me. For when it feels like you don't even know me. 
Chris, you don't need a reminder for that. Yes, I do. You're so nasty. It sucks that you don't. Just know it. I know it, but just the same. Wait, you can't recall the good times? I can't see any sign of love in you during our arguments. Chris, please don't. I don't want to see a note on the wall every day questioning the validity of my feelings for you. My feelings are real. Please don't question them. Yeah, all right. What's this, a mathematical equation? I know you get mad if I start analyzing what's making you angry. You said you don't need a little you need a little space for a while and you'll be fine. Fight you figuring it out and analyzing makes things worse and gives you another reason to get even angrier. So when I do that, let me know by saying it's happening. That you're about to get really mad. Say that and I'll disappear and just give you space to cool off. <laughs> what? It's, oh, update, updated uh, Monster Hunter. It's happening. That sounds so dumb. I'm not going to do that. Ah, uh, oh, fine. I'll give it a shot. Give you more... Half... More attention? Hello? Seriously? You complained about it that I should give you more time and attention and he just told me to leave you alone yeah but don't put up a wall Chris on a wall Chris I'm okay uh, no sacrifices talk about and discuss what needs work this no need to keep up with each other's bullshit if they say something that hurts you or something you don't like if something's bothering you let the other person know don't put up with it and suffer in silence you know I'd never suffer in silence huh yes I do Terrible controls to pass notes across. Well, that was fun. Fun? Uh, I love the sound of thunder in the rain. This cafe is so cozy, I should come here every day. Take me with you. So that's uh, just what I think they, uh... Detective! Uh, you, you, you asked to be informed of Jack returned. Well, he's, he's back now. Perfect. Great job, Watts. Officer Blunt, wish you could talk to Jack. Hey, Lenny, what are you snooping around for? Mark, thanks for the information. Let's go see Jack. <laughs> Sub D. Let's uh, stop by. Jack, what's up with my car? It's been about five days already. Oh man, don't stress, dude. You see, I had a hard time getting some of the parts. I got it now, so the car should be fixed by tomorrow. I need to ask you a couple of questions, Jack. Shoot. Not literally. <laughs> Have you uh, told us everything that happened on the 6th? Of course. Why wouldn't I? Unless I skip something unconsciously, something that I might have assumed unimportant. And what would that be? I mean, I, I, I did go to the church that day, but you, you know, no big deal, right? Jack, we know that you met Diane alone more than a couple of times. We know that Chris's sight was sabotaged by using tar, and that you had a bucket with you some days ago. So unless you tell us your version of events and how you're not involved but not guilty, I see things becoming very difficult from you from here on out. I'm only going to ask you a single question now. Answer honestly. Did you sabotage Chris's hotel construction site with tar or did you not? I... Y yes, I did. Oh, look, look, man, I, 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 yes, I did sabotage construction site, but it, it isn't me that planned that. I know, it's a church. I, I don't know what else Father Smith has been involved in, but he put me up to this. I know he did. I was only following his orders, dude, and I had my reasons. Stop talking, Jack. What have you been up to? Why are you secretly meeting Diane and the hotel project? What's going on? Okay, okay bottom line is, he, 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 
He didn't want a project coming up. I, I, I don't know why. He paid me to sabotage the construction and gave me the tools for it more than once. But Tar, he gave that to me too. He asked me to steal and wreck their tools. And yeah, he gave me good money to do it. That, that's how I got my convertible. He said the project was causing problems between the two. They were constantly fighting about it. You know, back of the town hall earlier, hmm? When I was meeting with them about the project, I saw this magazine about beachside hotels and, uh... Are you listening, Diane? Of course, baby. It got me thinking there are so many advantages to building on the coast. The beach, the water sports, even the transport. Good infrastructure. Okay, so... So, nothing. I'm just thinking about how nice beach resorts are. Right? What? What do you mean, what? Can't believe you're already bored of Pineview. I'm not. I love it here. Are you sure about that? Uh. So, uh, what are you reading? Hello? You know, I thought you were obsessed with this project. That it had to be in Pineview. I'm amazed that you can lose interest so easily. I'm not moving on from here, Diane. Thinking about all that is childish and irresponsible. What's the point? Oh, well, actually, it works, you see. One option would be to get this up and running, and then... Oh, God, Chris. You don't need to explain everything. Oh, okay, Dan, what's wrong? What's going on? This is just one big dumb misunderstanding. You know I'm bad at explaining myself. Ah, uh, no, you're just dumb. Diane, seriously? You're overanalyze everything. What else do you expect me to do when you don't explain what's going on with you? I'm not a bloody mind reader, day. Oh, calm down, Chris. Shame, I'd probably be a more lucrative business. I get it, you think Pineview was great and I should, shouldn't even think of leaving. I never said that. In any case, the point isn't whether or not I like Pineview, it's that you like Pineview. You are supposed to love this place. You can't just start thinking of beaches all of a sudden. Pineview is on the edge of a cliff. Supposed to? What do you mean supposed to? I'm a grown ass man, Diane. I can think of other places, the future. I'm so lost with you, honestly. Why is it even safe to talk about it anymore? Oh no, I mentioned booking a holiday. I hope it doesn't piss Diane off. Oh shit, I asked her if she wanted a coffee. I hope I haven't ruined Diane's day. You've been a child. No, you, you hard work, Diane. What is safe, Diane, really? It's like I have to filter my own goddamn thoughts just in case all of this happens. Don't understand you. Don't blame me if I can't read people. Tris, it's not my fault you were wired wrong. So that's how you feel, huh? Wired wrong. That's a really shitty thing to say. Let me stop, this is giving me a headache. Sure, Diane. Whatever you want. Chris? I know that was really terrible. I said some really mean things. It's just the way with me. When I get pissed off, I blow up. I say horrible things. Things I don't mean. I'm sorry I had to put you th up with that. You've been in there for a while now. You okay? Chris? I'm gonna make us some coffee, right, baby? Then we can watch a scary movie together. I'm sorry for snapping at you. I love you, Chris. Yeah, I wanted to help Diane. If I, if scrapping the project was going to make her happy, then I was up for it. It's not making her happy. It's making the vicar happy. But that wasn't the only reason I did it. Diane, she was beginning to feel scared, man. Scared of... Chris, he had a gun. There were a couple of arguments, and she said the gun was always within reach. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is getting too close. No way I care about you, and I want you to be safe. But there's no way I'm going to get involved with a gun. Please, Jack, I'm not safe. Please don't leave me in this situation. 
I don't know. Tell the cops. They could get really shitty if we try to handle it ourselves. You can't tell the cops. What would I tell them? He keeps it up there in that drawer. I just want to, you to take the gun and go. Leave the rounds here. Just please, please, Jack. I uh, talked to Father Smith about this. He uh, convinced me that the only way to end their arguments was to take the hotel out of the equation. Ha <laughs> ha yeah, yeah. I agree that it doesn't sound like the best way to help anyone. I realized that soon enough, too. All I did was cause more arguments, not make her happy, as Father Smith convinced me it would. I was a little slow to catch on, but event I eventually did, so I thought, What did you think, Jack? And what did you do? I, I decided to go and confront Chris, to talk to him face to face and tell him what I'd done, and to show him that he was making Diane miserable. I had wanted to stay out of it all, but I'd done a lot of damage and needed to fix things. I couldn't sleep, man. On the stick, I was frustrated. I, I was started walking over the place, that's when I heard the gunshot. How many shots did you hear? Just just one shot. That, that's when I freaked out and ran back to my place, that's all I heard. I wasn't even sure the shots came from their place. It was only obvious the next morning. Did you see anyone after the shots? No, I did. I, there's one shot, he said. No, I, I, I didn't see anyone on my way back. What time was this exactly? I, I, I don't really remember. Probably after 12 a.m. Are you sure what it was after 12? I, I, just, I just remember it was 12.30 a.m. when I got back. So probably my place is about 15 minutes from theirs. Jack, I'm arresting you on suspicion of the murder of Christopher Dean and Diane Miller. Wait, what? You have, I don't, just don't want him walking around and talking to the father. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you can and will be used against you in a court of law. But wait, wait. It wasn't me, dude. I just told you everything I know. You have a right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you. I'm not lying. Seriously. I can't have him walking around. D -d Detective, I got some news for you. It's not, I know it's not him. A sipping coffee, sorry. Diane's, Diane's father wasn't even in the country. That's right, Ryan, it doesn't matter anymore. Round up some officers and search the town for Father Smith. Officer Blunt, come with me. We'll look for him in the church. We need to find him now! Let's go! Come on. Come on, Officer Blunt, run like the wind. He isn't here. Where is he? The de detective, we looked everywhere. He's down in Pineview. He seems to have left town. Of course he has. Oh, it's him! Doesn't it make it obvious why is there else would he run? Michael? God damn it, we let him slip through our fingers. Of course it was him. Uh, no! Michael, please. What, what the heck is going on here? What the heck is going on here? We, we think we figured it out, sir. It's Father Smith. You got yourself wrapped up in this as well, officer. I know who you think it is, detective. You got all my men looking for him. Father Smith's such a respected figure of our town. One that's done so much for Pineview. He came here and started flinging accusations left, right, muddy in good people's names without any evidence. Sir? You're wrong. We have a confession from Jack. And is it conclusive? Did he say that Father Smith murdered someone? Or did you just go ahead and make the rest up? You come here, talk about how you... Who is that up here? You shouldn't jump to conclusions and now look what you just up to. It's true. For what reason, huh? I need to, no, I just need to talk to Father Smith. I wasn't going to say he did it. He's part of it. Why are you so hell-bent on pushing a story? Whatever your personal agenda is, whatever your intentions, keep him out of our town or lives. I've already called the head office. You're off the case. And I want you out of Pineview by this morning.
detective, are you sure you'll be okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. I'll tackle this tomorrow, right? I'll speak to Sheriff Harris. We'll sort it out. I'm sure the officers we send out will find Father Smith. Okay, Michael? Yeah, yes. Get some rest. We'll fix things tomorrow. Hey, Michael. The time has finally come, hmm? I've waited so long for this. Abigail, we had him. We almost had him. But you don't. It's over, isn't it? It... yeah, it is. Don't worry, Michael. You'll only be happier with me. Supposed to be touching these things. Quite possibly, I touch these stars, they explode into confetti. Thank you very much. Dream sequence lasting too long. That's enough. Come on, let's go. Let's move on. Ah, oh, that's nice. Blown away by a thousand stars Can't move anymore Back to the beginning in the trees I'm in the trees! Six feet underground Ooh, it was a fire! Jesus Christ! Tell me, Father Smith, set the hotel on fire! You look awful, detective. You got a brown beard and black hair. Another dream? Where on earth am I? Oh, my head. Still smoking, huh? <laughs> well, ah! Ugh. that building. I've seen it somewhere. Steady now. It's at the hospital. No. No, this car. How did it get here? Abigail? What are you going to do now, Michael? Why are you doing this? You're lost. You failed the case. Here it is. Here's the truth. Can you keep running anymore, Michael? Is it possible? Come here. Come to me. Oh, I gotta come to you. Right, okay. I can float in the air. Are you gonna keep your promise? Or are you gonna run? Are you gonna look at me? Give him to what you did. Time's up. I... It's not so bad after death. Don't you want to be with me again? Don't you feel responsible? How can you let me go and keep on living? I... I think I want to uh, stay. I want to fight. There's something within me. A voice other than yours. It says I can fight. I must fight. Fine. But remember, if you fail again, you'll exhaust your spirit. There'll be nothing left of you. You'll come with me. I know you will. 
You know it was your fault. I'll be waiting. No! 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 It wasn't my fault! I have to stop doing this to myself. Leave me. Let me live. Go away! Bye-bye, Abigail. Who the hell is burnt? Oh, it didn't burn down. Wait, 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 wait. Any uh, news about Michael? Nothing, nothing yet. He seems to have completely disappeared. I'm so worried. Where could he possibly be? I, I've got, I've got a couple of men looking for him without the chief's permission, of course. Say, what's, what's up with the sheriff yesterday? Have you ever seen him like that? Gosh, never. He didn't hesitate. Officer. Find anything? I think we uh, found how this fire started. Uh, this cigarette was used. Used? It was arson. Somebody deliberately tried burning this place down. Wait, that's... What is it? That's the same, that's the brand Michael smokes. What the, what the heck? Sir, we found him. Oh, thank God. Listen, don't, don't mention the cigarette to him for now. You don't trust him? I, I, I do. But, but don't... We don't know what state of mind he's in. Okay. Detective, where were you? Are you okay? Jeez, you, you look beat up, Detective. Do you need a doctor? Uh, Michael? Michael, what's going on? What's, what was that? A camera. Hey, who's, who's clicking photos in here? Camera? Ah, oh, I wonder if they let the press in. Blunt, we gotta catch him! What, who? Oh, it's getting exciting. Wait, detective, where are we going? It's gotta be Johnny, doesn't it? Wait, why, 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 why? Because of the cam- Yes, the camera, it's gotta be him. We don't have time to lose Blunt. But, Detective, it couldn't even be... Wait, hold on, what's that? Blunt, look at this. I'm sure it's from Johnny's camera. Oh, God. What? What? He was spying on them. I thought I'd find you up here. Hey, baby, I missed you today. I have so much to tell you, old oh, Tahan. We've made such good progress that the boys and I was were talking about. Chris, I was thinking, could we go out tonight? It's been so long since I last had you to myself. All right. Oh, please don't act like I'm twisting your arms, written all over your face. No, we go out. You want to stay in, huh? I prefer it to be honest. Yeah. I can't believe you. Here we go. You spend all of your time on site. I really appreciate. I can't deal with this today. Seriously? Seriously. I asked you to go to dinner and you react as though I asked you to pull out your own teeth out. That's not fair. No, it isn't. You're so unbelievably selfish sometimes. Let's not fight, please. Who said we're fighting? Is that all you expect from me? Mm. You can hardly blame me for that. Oh, he's fighting. It doesn't matter what you choose, you're going to fight. I just never know what's going to set you off. You know, I had to guess which version of you I'd be coming home to. I just love playing that game on my commute. Will it be happy Diane, loving Diane? Will I be stuck with a cruel Diane or the extra special mopey Diane? Who knows? Be mean. Oh, am I? I didn't realize. Stop overreacting. Maybe if we communicated like normal people, I wouldn't have to. Oh, how about the pencil? You pencil me in your diary for next week, huh? Then we can talk all you want. Do you know why we always end up here every damn time? Because I can't talk to you. I can't. I have to keep it bottled up just in case I step on one of your precious eggshells and piss you off. I just asked you for some time. Is that too much to ask? I'm tired. I wasn't even pissed off earlier, you know. Not until you freaked out for no reason and started bracing yourself for an argument. 
I'm not a monster. Stop making me out to be one. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, okay? Alright, let's go out. Are you serious? Don't do me any favors, please. What else should I do? I don't know. You care about me? About other people? The world, the sky, the bloody coastal infrastructure is all beautiful, right? I should try harder. You have to stop fucking with my head like this. It's not fair. How could you accuse me of something like that? You talk at me, not to me. But bricks and evening entertainment and wallpaper swatches. When you come home, rarely on time, I might add. You talk about your colleagues more than about me or our families. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You don't want to talk about your family. What I do have to say in return... Oh, love. I, I read such a good book yesterday. I had dreams too, remember? But then we return to the hotel. Always back to the bloody hotel. If I can't win out over a goddamn building, then, then I don't know if I can carry on. No, enough. I don't want to talk about this anymore. I'm done for the night. Hey Chris, what's up to you? Hey you, what are you up to? Just listen to some music. Oh, is it a new album? Hmm. Are you mad? No? Could have fooled me. Maybe not quiet and distant. What's wrong? I do love you, you know. Sure, Diane. Chris, do you really doubt that? Yes. Sometimes, yeah. You mean everything? I don't know whether to trust your feelings, Diane. I don't know whether you really mean the things you're saying right now. Chris, please don't say things like that. Well, what do you want me to say then? Because whenever, whatever I do say is wrong, according to you. I don't mean most of the things that I say. Then learn some goddamn self-control. I'm not a punching bag for all the things you may or may not want mean. No, you shouldn't. You shouldn't have to deal with me. I'm terrified that you leave me. I don't know what I'd do if I, that ever happened. You don't act like it. You act like you want to leave. You keep doing your best to make me leave. You tried to break it off, didn't you? Break us up. Why? I didn't mean it, I guess. I just wanted to piss you off or hurt you. Huh? You were successful in doing that. Looking at you right now, I will want to believe you. But you keep confusing me. Don't pay any attention to the things I say when I'm angry, Chris. I don't mean them. <laughs> I'll try. Can we forget this happened? Already forgotten. Hey, how about we go somewhere? Why? Come on, we got a car. Let's drive to the next town over and watch a movie. Maybe we can stay the night somewhere and drive back to Pineview in the morning. Remember how special you thought that drive was when we, you got me here from home? You kept saying how beautiful you thought the hills looked in the morning light, remember? Yeah, that was beautiful. Well, let's go. See, Diane, you get these things out of me. I want us to be this way, Diane. To inspire and pick each other up. Not break us down. Chris, I told you before, I don't want to break you either. God. Why was he watching them? Taking photographs and writing notes about them? Only he can answer that. Come on, we need to find Johnny. He lives on Overlook Street. We're at the hotel. Overlook Street. It's this way. Go! Come on, Blunt! Officer Blunt, run! Mrs. Patterson, I'm sorry for trying to burn down your hotel. <clears throat> I haven't seen the guitar man for a while. I'm not too sure who the guitar man is. This is it, this is... 
Oh, this is where he lives. <laughs> oh, detective, come in, please. How, how can I help you? Oh, oh. Mrs. Brown, is, is Johnny home? Yeah, yes, he heals. He gave it a bit to go. Uh, what, what is this about? Uh, he'd invite us to see his photographs a couple of days back. Ah, yes, I remember him telling me about that. He helped, helped you out with one of his pictures, didn't he? He's up in his room. I'll go get him. Make, make yourselves comfortable, please. Detective, what on earth were you today? And why did you look like hell? Amy, to be honest, I have no idea. I had the weirdest dream, and I'm not even sure it really was a dream. I might have sleepwalked into the woods. I'm not sure. What the hell? I'm not sure how to react to that. And the room? Any, any idea why it was on fire? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it was an accident or a short circuit. It's a good thing I wasn't in the room then. Hmm. Detective, you had nothing to do with the fire, right? What? Seriously? No, I didn't. Just making sure. Wait, oh God, did I? I can't remember anything. What's taking them so long? They've legged it. I can't sit still, I'm gonna walk around. I hope Mrs. Brown doesn't mind me smoking in here, but goddamn do I need one. Right now I'm on board with whatever makes you feel better. Any idea who that is? That's Mrs. Brown's late husband. He died in the war only a few weeks after Johnny's father was born. She was very young then. She had to take care of a family all by herself since. Mum said well, she could have married again. Uh, sorry. Mum says she opened her shop mere days after his death as there was no one else to put food on the table. I'm assuming that's Johnny's parents? Yes. What happened to them? They died some nine years ago in a car crash, apparently. It's just been Mrs. Brown and Johnny since. Mm. She's known to be a strong, rigid woman around Pineview, but she cares a lot for him. Detective! Uh, Johnny's refusing to come down, but that's alright. You can go up and talk to him. He's busy with his photographs, you see. He's got a little place in the attic where he develops them. Thank you, Mrs. Brown. Mrs. Brown. Ooh, red light, come in. Bang, photo's done. Ooh, scary mass murderer. Johnny? You were there outside my hotel room, weren't you? What are you doing? Why did you click the picture, Johnny? I, I, I saw smoke rising and I came over to see what had happened. I just wanted a photo because it looked beautiful. And why did you run, huh? Officer Watts began to shout at panic. I didn't know I wasn't allowed to click photos. I was so scared, so I ran. You dropped these photos as you ran from the hotel. Recognize them? Yes. Why do you have photos of Chris and Diane in their house, Johnny, huh? Were you spying on them? You've even written down the little details of what they said to each other behind the photos. Why? I... Detective, look. There are more. There are more photos. Many more photos of them. I got photographs of other things around Pineview, too. It was only the past couple of months that I started taking Chris and Diane's. They, they stood out in contrast to the rest of Pinefield with was shows in the photographs. Like an obsession to me, Johnny. No, not obsession, just curiosity. Look at this one, Detective. They had an argument that day, but it was, it was different this time. Ooh, flashback to another argument. Hey there, you. Ooh. Hey. Any luck today? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm amazed it's taking so long. Issues with documents, you know how it is. Oh, and I know. So stupid. What do you mean by that? Oh, God, Chris. Nothing? I mean, it's just silly how much red tape there is. It's just a hotel, right? 
This isn't exactly easy, okay? Calm down, Chris. You start shitting on me and my work again and you expect me to calm down? What are you talking about? I'm on the same page here. I'm as frustrated as you are. I don't... Yeah, oh, whatever. I need to act like a baby. Ah! Oh. oh my god. Damn, baby, listen to me. I don't know what happened. I'm so sorry. I will never, ever do anything like that again, okay? I'm so stressed out of work and I thought, no, it doesn't matter. I'm sorry. I'm so, so, so sorry. I don't know why you s I say the things I do. Christ, I don't know why I'm such a bitch sometimes. I didn't do anything, Diane. I just overreacted. I know, I know. Maybe I mean it today, but I have before and I might tomorrow. I can't stop. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to make our lives unbearable. I don't want, don't know what I'd do without you. Unbearable. No love. We go around and around in circles. It's driving me insane, but when it's good, it's the best I've ever been. Just for a little while, everything's okay. I haven't ever told this to anyone. I haven't even admitted it to myself, but there's something wrong with me, Chris. I'm so scared. There's nothing wrong with you, baby. Nothing at all. There is. Please just listen. You've screwed up, Chris. This whole thing is screwed up, and I don't want to lose it either. It's the only good thing I have. I know, I know, Diane. We'll make it work, I swear. I need help. We need help. We can do this together. You're not on your own. I know I'm going to switch again and invalidate all of this and say horrible things again. And none of that will be in my control. I just don't know if you believe me. I believe you, Diane. Of course I do. Look at me, look at me. We're going to fix this, you and me. We're going to work on it, a new project. I made you move here. This is my fault. We get help. It's going to be fine, okay? I believe you. Okay. Oh my god, why didn't you tell anyone, Johnny? Why didn't you call the police? Why didn't you show any of us this earlier when we asked if you had any more pictures that could help us? Johnny Brown, I'm arresting you on suspicion of... Wait, but, but... Detective... You do not have to say anything, may help me defense if you mention. What are you? Granny, granny! Well, why do you have a room full of pictures, Johnny? <laughs> I think the detective's losing it now. What were they planning? I, I, I wasn't planning anything. Don't lie! Detect. What? Uh, I, we, we should talk. Just. Not right now, Blunt. There's no time. Where were you that night? I, I was home. Why'd you do it? I... Answer me. Did someone ask you to kill them? Well? How did you get the gun, Johnny? Detective, I need to discuss something right now. I need to show you something important. What, what, does it have to be now? Yes, now. It has to do with this case. I can't wait. Fine, but make it quick. Okay, what is it? We don't have much time. I can't let another suspect slip through my fingers. Nothing, detective. You just need to calm down. What's gotten into you? You're just screaming at him and stare, scaring him. You're not even letting him speak. You need to go easy. In any case, we have no solid evidence that it was him... What the hell is going on in here? Who gave you authority to use this room to arrest citizens of my town? It's just a storeroom. You got some nerve, Officer Blunt. I'm disappointed in you supporting such nonsense. I go and release Johnny. No, he's a suspect. Do not say a word, Detective. This. Oh, I'm gonna. I gotta do. A, I can't remember his original voice. This is out of your jurisdiction. You were supposed to leave this town this morning. But Johnny is a murderer. He's done it. He had a room full of their pictures. Is there anyone left in this town that you haven't blamed yet? At first it was Father Smith, then you arrest Jack, and now you burn down a room in our hotel. Who are you going to question next? Me? 
What are you really trying to do here, detective? Have you been looking at the case object objectively? Or do you need to catch someone, anyone at all costs, even if they're innocent? You're obsessed with the thought of finding someone that's responsible, even if you have to make it all up. There's no case here, detective. It's murder-suicide. I won't let you pull my town into your mess, whatever your motivations may be. But then what's the hurry to close the case just because of the festival? What's the, why the hurry to arrest Johnny? Has your arrogance blinded you? Did you even bother looking for evidence before arresting Johnny? Look at this, Mrs. Brown just came over the station with it. Can you see what it is? It's a photograph. This is one of the photos in his room of pictures, one that you conveniently missed. Fifteen minutes past twelve on the murder night. What can you see in the picture? It's a crime scene that's Chris and Diana's house. No, you've been on the case and you can't even recognize that this isn't the crime scene. That's Johnny's house. Now look at the date and time the picture was taken, 15 minutes after the murder. That's when uh, Mr. Willis heard the gunshot. Johnny lives about 10 minutes away from Chris and Diane's house. Don't understand. How could he have been over at Chris's place and be home at the same time to click the picture, huh? How could he have clicked this picture of his own home at the same time as the shootings? I don't know. Maybe change the clock on his camera. Exactly. You don't know what you're doing, detective. Finally admit it. You wasted everyone's time and energy. You should be happy. I'm just letting you walk after all you've done. Just get out of this town now. Just go. Oh dear. I see they've given you a new room. It's only temporary. It's just so they could dump my bag somewhere for the day. I'm not staying, can't actually. Yes, that's a pity. Jack's brought your car, it's been fixed. That's good. I'm here with Officer Blunt, she's waiting outside. Okay, okay, I'll be a minute. No, it's not that, she's worried. I don't know what you want me to say or do, Doc. Talk to her. What about? Whatever you've been carrying with you all these days, tell her, please. It'll do you good to talk about to a friend, and I think you see her as a friend, right? Yeah, you could say that. Well, great then. And have a good drive back home. I hope we can meet again under different circumstances, hopefully. Thanks, Doc. You take care, too. I guess I should go talk to her. Hey, Michael. So you're really leaving, huh? What choice do I have? It's over. So, what will you do when you go back? I don't know. I haven't thought about it. Oh. I really thought we were going to figure it all out, even if it is murder-suicide. I wish we had some proof. Or some answers. I feel like I've come to know them over the past few days, and I know it's going sour towards the end, but to kill themselves, I wonder what really pushed them to it. Do you think they did it? It's possible. Really? You know, my dad, he... I never really told you about him, did I? When I was 10, he killed himself. Gunshot to the head. I'm sorry, Amy. I was there when it happened. I ran down to see where the loud bang had come from. There he was, sat in his favorite chair with a gun in his hand. and 
Mother tried explaining it best she could. He was sad, she said. I could barely make sense of it at the time. Why was he unhappy? Wasn't our family enough? Did I not make him happy? Could he have done anything to change it? But of course, I was ten. What could I have done? I tried figuring out what led to his depression for months. I went over his last days with us. I don't remember much, but I recall he changed in some ways during the last couple of days. I couldn't understand it then, but it just felt off. He didn't feel like the dad I knew, even though he acted it. Detective, the thing is, I don't know if you've always been this way. I don't think you have, and I think you used to be different. The way you are, I have become, you remind me so much of him. You remind me of the way he changed during his last days. It feels the same. I was only ten then. I was helpless. But I'm older now, and I understand people. I'm a police officer, for God's sake. I can't... I can't let that happen again, and I won't let it happen again. Amy, I... What's wrong, Michael? Please, I... I need to know what's making you suffer this way. What happened to Abigail, Michael? Uh, okay. Abigail is... was my wife. God, it's hard to talk about this to finally talk to someone. We met when we were at university. I'd sit in the library every day after classes, studying up on different subjects, buried in books. She sat on the same table as me once, but didn't say anything. I didn't either. I didn't really know her well. We saw each other in the hallways. She had a class or two. Despite that, she stood out to me. She looked different from the rest. Like a sensible, balanced, mature person, you know? <laughs> that can be rare sometimes. That went on for a couple of weeks. She never said anything, nor did I. We'd just share a table. But I'd become comfortable in her presence, and that was rare too. One day, I very uncharacteristically caught myself looking at her. So did she. Hi. Mm, hello. You're a slow reader. I, well, what? You've been reading that book for weeks now. It's a dense subject and well where actually I am a slow reader. Why don't you take the book home with you? I like the atmosphere here. I know what you mean. Me too. Do you want to take a break and go somewhere? She was confident, understanding and really, really patient. I loved that. We quickly became inseparable, often spending hours together during our own thing without saying a word to each other. We didn't need to talk, plan, or do much to have fun together. Being around each other was enough. Her company was meditative. Being with her gave me the same feeling of peace and calm that she gave me. Obviously, a couple of years after graduation, we were married. Nothing spectacular or out of the ordinary happened leading up to our marriage. That's just the way we were, but that was bliss for us. We were a bedrock, a foundation for each other. She meant everything to me. Everything. Which is why I can't come to the terms with what I've done. I need to sip some water. This year, on 7th of April, we were about to go out for dinner. We've been married two years at this time. God. Here we go, I can't stop now. I've got to find out what happened to Michael. Hey Michael, you ready to go? Yeah. Oh wait, hold on, I think I forgot something. I'll be right back. The phone rang, I should never have answered it. Hello? Boss, sorry to call you home. What's up? 
I just received a call from an informant. Apparently he has info that he wants to lead to share about Alex. Where is he? He's near the intersection of 22nd and 9th Avenue. You're not gonna go see him right now, are you boss? I'm headed that way anyway, a couple of questions won't take any time. How about tomorrow? He could be gone tomorrow, Warren. He could change his mind, Alex could find out and try to silence him. It's just an informant. We had our first lead in months, let's not mess it up. Alright, I'll join you ASAP, wait for me. Hurry up. Alex was a suspect in a major case, I had been trying to pin him down for some months. I was convinced he was the key to unlocking the case, but my boss felt I was getting obsessed and tunnel visioned. He wanted me to give up on it and pursue other leads. Alex kept slipping away like a rat. After months of silence, here was a chance to make a breakthrough at last. You ready to go? I'll just be a minute, alright? Why now? Where are you going? Something urgent's come up. I'll be back in a minute. You've been told the way outside the cafe. Where's the cafe? I remember the color of the sky that even a pale peach slowly turning darker as we ran. Where's the cafe? The rush in the streets, the traffic, the sound, the lights. The whole place was so alive, vibrant. Part of me wanted to drop by, but I couldn't. I just had to see the informant. I had to see the informant. Here's the cafe. The smell of coffee, the laughter, and voices of the people drifting from the cafe. Standing there, watching those people in their happy, cozy, and warm, I realized that I wanted that, not this. A speeding car broke me out of my daydream. That's not your fault. Seconds later, I heard gunshots. I ran back to my car as fast as I could. It couldn't be, of course not. Why did I have to bring her along though? No, I was just freaking out. Everything will be fine. Getting back seemed to take a million years and a million thoughts flood my head. I just remember looking at the sky. It still looked the same. Seeing Abigail dead, my whole world fell apart. There was no reason for me to carry on. Alex had been in the area. He knew of me. He knew I was after him. He knew the car I drove. I had been careless, irresponsible, and she paid the price. I didn't know if he thought I was in the car or just wanted to spite me. He just drove past my car and opened fire. But one thought stopped me from doing anything to myself. Find him, make him pay. That was the only thing that kept me alive at that moment. I was back at work the very next day. I didn't dare allow myself the time to think about it. The informant had run away. I would have to start looking for Alex again, but that gave me purpose. I didn't get a chance to do that though. They found Alex the next day. He was killed in a shooting that broke out when a deal went bad. A meaningless death in a back alley, fit for scum like him. But why now? Why not day before? Why did he have to take Abigail away just one day before that? Just one day. And I took her there. I made it happen. I took her to the wrong place at the wrong time. I lost that purpose too, but it carried on for some reason aimlessly. I kept coming to work every day. Chief asked me to take a few days off, but work was the only thing keeping me sane or sedated. I stopped going home and started staying at a motel. I didn't want to see that house again without her. I put myself completely into my work during the day and at night. I'd be so tired that I'd 
go to sleep right after work. I eventually stabilized. I got into a rhythm of living without thinking of her or anything. I managed to shut away all thoughts and memories of her. It was the only way I could live. It slowly developed into a new life and almost normal life. Work was all that mattered. Not thinking about her became second nature. And I hadn't thought about her at all for months. Until I was sent here. There are so many moments, small, beautiful, that I buried inside and try to forget. Because it hurts so much to think of how good it was. It's uh, so scary to move on. Every day that goes by moves with me further away from the last moment I saw her. She keeps becoming a part of my past with every passing second. With time, I've forgotten so much that's happened. I can only remember a few big moments. The only smaller moments have dissolved around them. They're like small islands, archipelagos, you know? A few memories still sticking out in the sea. But every day the numbers grow lesser and the islands become smaller, disappear one by one. I'm scared of that. Soon it'll be one year since it happened, then two, and then ten. I'll move on and she'll become an important to my life. How is that right? It would be comfortable, convenient to move on, to feel better. But do I deserve that? How can I be happy again after my actions killed her? She wasn't just my wife, you know. It isn't just my loss. She was her own person with her own life, dreams, ambitions. And I took all that away from her. Michael, she knows that you loved her. It wasn't intentional. And she won't become unimportant to you. That will never happen. Believe me, that voice telling you it, that it wasn't your fault, that you couldn't have done something, you need to stop listening to it. She wouldn't want you to blame yourself, would she? Even then, I just miss her so damn much. I feel like I can't risk being happy anymore. I don't want to see what follows when you lose something good. Bad times don't invalidate the good, Michael. They're both real. I know what you mean. But I just can't bring myself to live like that. To live without a burden. You're right, you know. I wasn't always this way. I used to be different. I was never this impulsive, never made decisions without thinking things through and considering every possibility. The way I am these days, this, that isn't me. It's only since I've come here. I feel like I have no self-control. I feel I need to find someone responsible to make someone pay anyone. To punish someone just, just because I, I never had a chance to. Because he couldn't. He never got a chance to. Of course. What? Because he never got a chance to confront them, Amy. Who? The rain, the rain. Did it rain that night, Amy? Did it? I, I, I don't remember. I think, try to remember. I think so. I think it did. Of course, there were no fingerprints on the gun. It was too cold. He was wearing... What? Oh no, I made a mistake. I, I shouldn't have. Wait, what's going on? What did you do? I hope it's not too late. We need to go now. Wait, what's going on, detective? I don't get it. No time to explain. Let's go. See, I can't stop playing now. It's too damn good. Gonna make that sheriff suck eggs.
John, Johnny, no, wait! Stay, stay away, detective! Johnny, you don't have to do this. I, I have to, there's no other way now. I, I didn't mean to, I really didn't. I know, Johnny. I know you didn't mean to. I, I was scared. I, I couldn't think clearly. I, I didn't mean to. But that doesn't make a difference now, does it? What's done is done, and now I don't see any other way. I'm not that kind of person. I don't even get very angry. I can't believe I did such a dis disgusting thing. I hate it! She gave me the gun, Diane. I only wanted to give it. Gave it back to her. Why did she give you the gun? Why does it matter? I killed them, didn't I? She was screaming at me. Get out! I, I lost my head. I know why you lost control, Johnny. Trust me, I know how it feels. How? What? How do you know? about how how it feels I've made mistakes too it wasn't my fault I didn't mean to do it even if I don't end it myself that put me in prison for life or the death penalty what's the point you won't get death penalty Johnny you were provoked you were emotionally disturbed at the moment. Oh, I shouldn't have said this. You didn't go there with the intention of hurting them. No, 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 I didn't. Then you have a case that's 10 years, probably less considering your age. How old are you? 16. Johnny, your sentence won't be harsh. It could even be less than five years. That doesn't matter. How, how can I live with what I've done, even if they let me off easy? How will I ever live with any of this? I can't forgive myself. So what's the point? Think about your grandma. I do love Granny, but she she turned a blind eye, just like everyone. Would, would she accept me after what I've done? Would she even look at me? Or would she pretend I don't even exist? Anyway, what will she do with a grandson like me? She's better off without me. No, there's no point. Sorry, Detective. Johnny, no! You should have rugby tackled him. Oh, nice one. Nice one, officer. You're okay, Johnny. I got you. You'll be safe now. I'm so sorry. I. Diane gave me the gun. She was scared. She was scared for the gun in the house. Chris and her would argue a lot. She said Chris was beginning to get angry every time every fight was worse than the last. I didn't want to keep the gun with me. It felt uncomfortable, horrible. That night, after Granny had gone to sleep, I snuck out of the window. Oh, hey, Johnny, what's up? Is, is Diane home? Oh, yeah. Diane! Just a minute. So what's up, Johnny? Nothing, just wanted to talk. You know, I'm taking Diane to Madagascar for a holiday. I just told her about it. She's pretty excited. Hence the wine. That sounds great. Yes, Chris, what? Oh, hey, Johnny, what are you doing here? Diane, I... What did you get that fear for? What is wrong with you? I can't keep it anymore, Diane. I don't want to. Please take it back. Are you insane? Keep that shit in your pocket and get the hell out of here. You got that? Get out. Just go. Go, Johnny. Johnny? What are you doing here? Come. They're fighting again. I hate them. Leave them be, Johnny. Forget about them. Um, let's get out and... No, I hate them. I'll kill them. I'll kill them both. Stop! What are you doing here? You put up with this, haven't you? 
Yeah, go ahead. Bang me for this, too. Say that again. Stop it, stop it. Stop. What did you say? You little shit. You see this gun, I'll put a bullet through your head next time you interrupt me. Got that. Got that. I am. Three bullets. I'm so sorry. I wish I could undo it all, but I can't. Where's Johnny gone? Put him in the car, officer. Ahem. Good job, detective. Turns out you had it right all along. God, I'm exhausted. Well, who'd have thought? We actually did it. We caught the person responsible. Johnny. Doesn't exactly feel good, does it? It doesn't. I don't know how to feel. But I'm glad we got here in time. You, you gonna stay here a few more days, Michael? No, I don't think so, Ryan. Just tonight. I need to sleep so much. Need a drink. Man, I haven't slept that well in ages. Better wear something appropriate for today, something formal or black. Oh, I could really do with some coffee. All right, I do need to finish this. Let's wear something black. Yep, I'm ready to leave and wrap things up. This is gonna be an extra long episode and maybe I'll split into two, who knows. But where the hell am I going now? Meet Amy and Mark's cafe, okay. Hello, hello detective. I heard what happened yesterday. It was quite hard to believe it really. Johnny's been such a nice dose, sir boy. I really didn't understand how he could do that. I'm glad you stopped him from hurting himself, though. Anyway, are you on your way back? Yeah, I'll be leaving Pineview in an hour or so. It was good meeting you, Mr. Stone. Come back here and stay with us any time. Don't burn the hotel down. We'd be happy to see you again. Just make sure it's on vacation and not for work. <laughs> Will do, Mrs. Barrison. Goodbye. Oh, is this where I go around saying goodbye to everybody? How nice. Some people I might not say goodbye to. I um, must go to the coffee shop. Uh, oh, hey, wait there, are we gonna see the guitar guy? Yes, I knew it. Ah, uh, uh, heard weaving, crime-solving friend. Why am I talking like this? I can't, I can't remember the voice, crime-solving friend. I heard what happened yesterday. It's impressive, the way you talked him down. It's all a little crazy. This town will take a little while to settle down. Are you, uh, are you leaving today? I am, yes. No reason for me to hang around anymore. You're just gonna have to come back then if you want to listen to my music. Before you leave, can you help me out one last time? I'd love to. I think this song is quite appropriate too. Here goes. 
I wake up this misty morning, remembered the buried pain. The dream has passed me by, like in last night's refrain. Like last night's cold rain. Perfect. Perfect. You haven't lost your touch, my friend. It's only been seven days. Like last night's cold rain. So poetic. Works with the misty morning, part two. Well, thanks as always. I hope we get to meet again someday. I'd love to hear you play all this. Take care now. Goodbye, detective. Let's go see Grandpa as well. Don't want to see Grandma. I arrested your grandson. Don't want to go and see the vicar. You can bugger off. So that's where the missing bullet went. Outside from the open window, yes. While grazing Chris's ear and knocking him out on the way. Correct. Damn, no wonder Mr. Willis didn't see anyone once the final shot did wake him up. It had already been about 15 minutes since Johnny had left the house. What a week it's been, right? Pfft, you're telling me. Here I was leading a quiet life in a quieter station and I thought I was busy. This place is never going to feel the same again. Everything feels different. You know what really sucks though? What? I don't know if uh, they would have ever been able to or not, but they never got a chance to try and fix things, did they? Hey, 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 you guys ready? Sleep out both of you? Funny you should ask that. Shall we get going? Oh, where is he going? Scottish? He's not Scottish, he's Canadian. Damn it, I am going to finish this game in this sitting. Most certainly I am. We gathered here today to pay our respects and to celebrate the lives of Christopher Green and Diane Miller. Is that the vicar? A young couple whose lives were cut short by a tragic series of events. For that, we must accept responsibility and admit as a community we have fallen short. That we all failed them. Yeah, the vicar. Has the vicar done a, the vicar's done a runner, and is this the this is the detective failed them. Chris and Diane moved to Pineview to start a new life together. They chose to place this place to settle down and follow their dreams. But they were made to feel unwelcome. We rejected them and shut them out of our community. Not by our actions, but our inaction. No, your actions as well. You sabotage their plans. Not through harsh words, but not by speaking at all. And yet, the number of people gathered here today shows that despite all that, they've touched our lives in some way. Oh, it's not. It is the vicar. And we must remember that. To not underestimate the impact each one of us has had, everyone that we meet. So reach out. Speak of what bothers you. Confront the darkness. And you do not have to do that alone. Remember that we can make a difference in others' lives. Let's do our best to make sure it's a good difference. Like tarring their tools and equipment, vicar. It's the very least we should expect from ourselves. Doc, you did a good job there, Doc. Thanks, Detective. I did what I could. Well, I... 
Yeah, sorry, it was just it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, We need somebody back in the church. I doubt Father Smith's going to be back anytime soon. And even if he is, I expect he'd be in a bit of trouble to deal with. Anyway, you look better today, Detective. I'm really happy to see that. I didn't recognize the purple hair. Yes, I, yeah, I think I feel better. Thanks for looking out for me in the cast past couple of days. I, it wasn't easy times. That's kind of my... That's kind of my job, isn't it? I'm happy you took me on my advice. You're a good man, Michael. I just wish the best for you in life ahead. I look forward to us meeting again someday, under different circumstances, preferably. Me too. Goodbye, Doc. Can I just leave? Mrs. Brown. Oh, Johnny, why did it have to be him? Poor boy, it wasn't his fault, it was all mine. I turned a blind eye to everything, I let it happen, most grandmothers do. I thought I could make him forget. Don't blame yourself, Mrs. Brown. No, it's about time I face reality. I had my part to play in all this, I need to accept that. Only Johnny had to pay the price. I regret that for the rest of my days. Mrs. Brown is sure that Johnny's case will be considered as it should be. As a case to be made here, he wasn't completely responsible for his actions. It was voluntary manslaughter. I'm sure he'd be back home soon. You did what you had to do, Detective. Those poor souls, they only had you to speak up for them. Take care. Goodbye, Mrs. Brown. Don't worry, Detective. I'll take care of her. <laughs> Dirty old man. I'll give her the support she needs in these hard times. She's been such a strong person all her life, but I think she might appreciate a friend this time. Sure she will, Grandpa. Uh, there isn't much time before I join the others here, is it? Others where? Underground! Oh, um... So I got a little time to do all the good I can, you know? You've done a lot of good for Pineview, Grandpa. I think the people really appreciate you here. Of course they do! Anyway, take care of yourself now, son. And if you ever feel lonely or something, if you ever need someone to talk to, Grandpa's always here, right? All right, Grandpa. Oh, uh, Detective. Uh, hey, Detective. What are you two doing here? How's Audrey and Alan? Getting better. She'll be discharged from hospital in a couple of days. I can't wait to begin again. Mark? Back to regular old life. Uh, there's also, there's a pub to think about now that Alan's leaving. I think I'll keep it as part of this town's identity now. Mine, in a way. Uh, maybe Lenny could take over full time. Huh, you keep a pub when you, when you could shut it down. I never thought this day would come. Well, it's been a lot of days I, that I thought would never come. Good job of the case, Detective. I'm happy you figured it all out. Uh, the people in this town needed answers, even if they acted otherwise. I think we can all slowly come to terms with our role in this whole tragedy and learn to live better. Better get help, Mark. Drive safe, Detective. See you soon. Goodbye. Ah, yes. Hey, Detective. How you doing, Brad? I, I, I get, I, all right, I guess. I'm just Miss Chris. I wish she stayed in touch. Oh, I wish she stayed in touch. Oh, and all a little bit too late, though, right? I guess that's just something I have to learn to learn with. Learn to live with. <laughs> I'm glad you discovered the truth. It's tragic what happened, but at least they were on the same side in the end, you know? I know what you mean. I'm gonna miss my buddy. Take care now, Detective. You too, Brad. Oh, good luck with the wedding. Thank you. That reminds me I'm supposed to give this to you. Invitation for the wedding. Think you can make it? I think so. I'll do my best to make it. Glad to hear it. I'll see you then. Take care. Goodbye, Brad. Hey, Michael. All right, Ryan. Yep, are you heading back right now? Yeah, I think it's about ten. I'll get it. Uh, it's only been, what, a week? Man, feels like a lifetime has passed before, by in the last few days. It does, doesn't it? Great job in the case, Michael. That was something. You saw truths that none of us could. You kept an open mind even though the case looked shut. That's an ideal for me to pursue and I, I won't be able to do that someday. You did really well saving Johnny back there, Ryan. And considering the Chiefs. 
professionalism, it's up to you and Blunt to really take care of this department now. Thanks, thanks, detective. Good luck back home. Come, come back anytime you feel like it. See you, Ryan. Said goodbyes to everyone. You ready to go? Yeah, I'm done. So what are you gonna do when you get back? I gotta go home and set so many things straight. I have some friends that wanted to help. I have my parents. I haven't spoken to them in so long. They've been worried sick. I need to tend to that. I need to move back to my own home. There's a lot to figure out when I'm back. It's about time. I think I'm looking forward to it too. That's good. And after that, back to work. I uh, think it might take a little holiday. The past few days have been stressful. I'm looking forward to getting back to work and seeing old faces, but I think a short vacation will do me good. That's great. Any ideas where? Somewhere less rainy and warm. Don't blame you. And you? What are your plans? I've been thinking about the things that you told me. I think it's time I moved on to bigger and better things. I'd like to work in a bigger city, maybe even yours. The way you talk about the work culture and the lifestyle, it sounds exciting. I think that's a very good idea. I'll put a word in, word in at the department back home. I think you'll do very well. I'd love that. Listen, Michael, about Abigail. Are you going to be okay when you get back there? Hmm, maybe. Maybe I'll get used to it. I don't know. I think I can learn to live with it at least. I now feel grateful more than anything. You give me a call if you need a friend, all right? Understood, ma'am. Take care now, Michael. Drive, drive safe now, Mike. Bye, Michael. Take care of yourself, all right? I will. Well, see you too soon. I hope you do. Well, what now? Coffee? What? Again? We just had... The cafe's right behind us, right? I can smell it. All right, all right. Damn, it was Johnny all along. So, I'll leave the credits roll for that contemplative... Hi, Abigail. Introspective look at a detective story as well as a murder mystery case. Thank you for sitting and watching through the entirety of Rain Swept if you made it this far. I enjoyed, even if you didn't. And I'll leave the credits roll by. I'll leave with a goodbye. Bye-bye.
for watching and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give us a like if you've enjoyed our content. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and our private Discord server. Just follow the links in the description below.